Test. Ready? Good morning. My name is Alpha Marie Goombay. I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am here on behalf of Norma Jean Foster's family, and we want to say thank you. I know the family is grateful that you have come out today to honor the memory of Norma Jean Foster. In John 14, chapter 1, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus tells us, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, are teepees. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So we would like to welcome you today. And this is our tradition among our Native American people across this land. Norma Jean Foster was a proud member of the Ponca tribe of Nebraska. Our people prayed many, 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 many years from time began. They believed in their creator, Wakanda, one God, one creator, supreme natural being. And so our people lifted up prayers all across this land. And I know Norma Jean was also a woman of prayer. And I've asked her relative to come and open us up in respect to her memory with a word of prayer. Carrie Voss will come and utter a prayer as a welcome. Thank you. Ijaja, we we take me ha ha she punka wa u carry. First of all, I'd like to offer my condolences to the family and just let you know that I love you all. I love Norma so much. She was always so good to me. And I knew that uh, we talked about her mom a lot. I know she missed her mama too. He said, we all miss our mama. You all are going to miss your mama, but we know that she's with Jesus right now. 
And I used to be not a good person either, and I, I was saved, and I'm bapt, I'm bapt, was baptized as well. And I've been a Christian for, I would say, at least 20 years now, 20 plus years. And so I do know God. I knew to, I do know the Lord in Jesus. And I know that he always has my back. And so I would just like to offer a word of prayer for you all, and, and then we'll get started with the services. Father God, Lord Jesus, we come before you at this time. And we just ask that you take pity upon us, Lord, as we we come before you. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around this family, all the children and the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, the nieces and nephews, the friends, all the ones who are, are mourning for her. But we know that she's with you, Jesus. We know that she's there, but we're going to miss her physical, the physical things that we have with her, the, the physical bond. We won't be able to talk to her, maybe, and hold her and, and hug her, but we know that you have her in your arms. And Lord, I just lift all everyone that represents a family here, that they will you'll be with them, be with their family, keep them safe and keep them healthy. We ask that you bless the service, bless everyone that's here, we ask and pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We will now have a family come, a family member come and read the obituary. Norma Jean. Norma. Nor, Norma Jean Foster was born April 9th, 1937, to Harvey Niels Suvakrubi and Goldie Rebecca Papan in Verdell, Nebraska. <clears throat> she had an older brother, Ronald, and a younger brother named Harvey, who everyone called Sonny or Sonny Boy. In her adolescence, she moved to Omaha. Nebraska and stayed there the rest of her life. <clears throat> Norma was a loving grandmother, great-grandmother, and great-great-grandmother. During her life, she raised six daughters and helped raise many, many grandchildren. When her grandchildren were young, she enjoyed playing music all day on each Saturday and showing her daughters different dances like the foxtrot. <clears throat> she loved spending her holidays and weekends with her family. Each Christmas season, she would spend weeks picking out the perfect Christmas gifts for all of her grandchildren. Throughout her life, she also raised and loved many dogs. She loved to tell her children about her dogs and always wanted to have a dog in her life. Her most recent dog that she loved was Gizmo. Norma was also a proud member of the Ponca tribe of Nebraska and loved buying and wearing all her native jewelry. One of Norma's favorite pastimes was watching television shows and movies. Some of her favorite things to watch were cooking shows like Halloween Wars and game shows like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. She also loved her movies and had a large collection of DVDs. Some of her favorite actors to watch were Chris Helmsworth and Timothy Elephant. She thought both were very handsome. Norma loved cooking and frying different foods, steak, corn, and everything else. Her favorite drink was Mountain Dew Live Wire Orange. She loved her Mountain Dew. Norma also enjoyed doing crosswords, finds, looking through magazines, and reading in her spare time. Her family would even say she was a speed reader and that she could read Gone with the Wind in a day. Norma was also an avid shopper. She loved ordering from her catalogs, but would never use the same items because she would was worried about ruining them. 
She was also a collector of paper dolls and salt and pepper shakers. She, she was, she, they had no longer, no other place to go and do anything for those she loved. Norma lived in a place full of love and laughter. Uh, Norma was survived by her daughters, Brenda, Don, Sheila, Dave, Melody, Judy, Leslie, and Stephanie. 18 grandchildren, 50 great-grandchildren, and five great-great-grandchildren. She will be missed dearly by all of them. We are now going to have two family members uh, come and give a remembrance of uh, uh, Norma. And if those two would come up now, and um, we want two, two representatives to come and share about uh, you would come. And as you come, come sit back here, and then I'm going to sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. My name is Emma Carlson. I'm Norma's youngest grandchild. So me and my mom both kind of prepared something, so I'll read what my mom wanted to say first because she's not feeling well. And her phone is dead, so I guess we won't be hearing that today. I'll read what I had to say. It's not turning on. Did you turn it off? Oh, it's turning on, so I'll read mine first then. Okay. <coughs> My grandma was an amazing woman with a bigger heart than anyone here. She was also so strong. She had the heart of both a lion and a lamb, which, which speaks greatly to her character. I believe God called on grandma because he needed both a caretaker and a fighter for the war in heaven that's yet to come. We all know she'd be one amazing warrior. Moving on from word on her character, I remember when I was a child and my cousins and I would spend the days at grandma's. She would always give me these iced oatmeal cookies, and I love those, but I've never had one like that again. The ones she gave me weren't homemade. They were probably store-bought, plain iced oatmeal cookies, but I don't think I'll ever taste one quite like it again. It might have been because I was a child or because I was with Grandma, but I just I don't think I'll ever be able to get another one like that. I love you, Grandma, and I am so grateful that I ever had and that I ever had the amazing opportunity to know someone like you. Now I'll read my mom's. I gotta pull it up here, sorry. So I'm gonna be speaking I, but I'm, it's gonna be from my mom's perspective. I am Stephanie's, uh, I am Norma's youngest, oh, did you write this for me to say it? No, I oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm Norma's youngest daughter. My mom is an amazing woman. I was thinking of how to describe mom, and it dawned on me that she was like the Good Samaritan in the Bible. The parable of the Good Samaritan is told by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. It is about a traveler. I will read, I will read you it. It's Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. This is from the New International Version. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to get my name in the book of eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? The lawyer then answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. Your name will be in the book of eternal life. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man who was down from, Jer from Jer excuse me, Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. 
They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him in to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took, by out, two, he took out two denar denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? This is what Jesus said. The expert in law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. And that is what my mother did. Mom would help anybody in here today. If you didn't have a place to stay, she would take you in and feed you. Sometimes I would say, Mom, why do you take everyone in and help them over and over again? Mom would just say, oh, they needed help, so and so I helped them. There may be some of you here that didn't even know my mom very well. But if you ever was down and out, she would, she would have helped you. And she would have let you have a place to lay your head and she would have fed you fed you good, she would actually fatten you up. My mom taught me how to be a mom and how to love unconditionally. Mom had no money, but she had love and, and she cared for all of our kids one time or another. My mom could be anyone at Jeopardy, but would go head to head with Johnny's dad, Big John. And she also loved challenging David, my brother-in-law. She would ask David, she would say, ask David, he will know the person, actor or singer or whoever it was you were thinking of. And David always knew the answer. At the end, she wasn't worried about her paper dolls or any material items. She was just worried about all of us in Gizmo. Um. Norma was an amazing woman. <laughs> She loved me with her whole heart, and I loved her with mine as well. Um, she was my best friend in the entire world, ever since I was a little girl. Um, I have dreaded this day for many years because I knew it was coming. And the last few days, I kept thinking of all the times I spent with Grandma and all the memories I had with her, and there were so many of them. Um, kept thinking about every time she would argue with my mom, which was a lot of times, and she would be so mad at her, and when my mom would walk in the other room, she'd go, <laughs> or, <laughs> um, and that was just grandma's personality. She didn't care about anything. Uh, when Callista was little, one day we were at her house, and Callista was crying and screaming and yelling, and grandma's solution was to walk over and moon her. <laughs> And it worked because Callista stopped crying and was like, what the hell is wrong with you? And Grandma said, well, you're not crying no more, are you? Um, she was fierce and she was strong. And for a moment, I didn't think she was ever going to die. I thought I was going to have her forever because she never gave up. And that's something that she always instilled in me and everyone around me was that when you're down, you don't stay down, you get back up. Nobody's perfect, and Grandma loved you for all of your flaws. And she didn't care what was wrong with you. She just knew that you were hers, and she was going to take you into your, her family. Even if you weren't her family, even if you weren't born into her family, if one of her family members welcomed you in, she did as well. And she loved them for their flaws, too. When I was little, I used to watch beaches every day, three times a day with Grandma. And every time, I would cry, no matter what. We'd get to the end, and she would die, and I would cry. And my Grandma would tell me, why do you cry every time? You know how it's going to end. And you always cry. And I've been thinking about that a lot. Because me and Grandma spent a lot of time talking about what it was going to be like when she wasn't with me anymore. 
And she kept telling me that it was going to be okay. And that she would always be in my heart, and I know she will be. But I still cried. <laughs> and I know she suffered for a long time and that she's not in any more pain. It was really hard seeing her like that the last couple months. But she was happy that all of her family was together. And I know she felt all of us there together in her final days. And I know that she's watching over us now. And that she'll always be with us. Um, I seen a quote the other day and it said, in the end, everyone will end up a story. And everyone in this room has amazing stories of Grandma Norma, whether it's her screaming and yelling and being mean, because she did that a lot. Whether it's throwing hangers at you from across the room because you were being bad, or cooking for you, or giving you your favorite recipe, even though it was different every time you called. You all have those stories and those memories, and so just think of those every time you get sad, and she'll be with you. I love you so much, Grandma. The family has selected a song to be played in her honor. And as you hear this song, please think of the memories that have been shared. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, through the storm. Precious Lord, me, me, oh. In my Precious way, Lord, goes great. Precious Lord, living in it. In my life is almost good. Cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall, take my hand, precious love, me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and good. at the river I stand guide my feet hold my hand take my hand Precious love, me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me home, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am Precious love, lead me home, lead me home. 
We will have two more family members come forward and share their remembrances. And as they come, I'll sing a second stanza of Amazing Grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. <clears throat> oh, this is hard. Um. Grandma was just so, such an amazing grandma to have. I mean, she was just supportive of anything I ever asked her. Um, I asked her about Jared. Grandma, what do you think about Jared? She was like, marry him. So I married him. I was like, Grandma, do you think I should move to Kearney? And she was like, yeah, I think you should do what you feel like is the right thing to do. And I said, well, I don't know what is the right thing. And she's like, well, um, what could it hurt? I mean, go see what it's like, you know? And there's things that I just look back on and I'm like, I'm really glad I got that guidance because I might not have been there or done that. And, you know, she was the one that gave me the courage to do those things. So um, I called her and said, hey, what do you think? Do you think I should go to hair school? And she was like, yeah, because then I always have someone to do my hair. So, and, and she was like my biggest supporter when it came to that. She would always tell me, um, oh, so-and-so got their hair done, but it's not as good as mine. And <laughs> um, when I went to state boards, she came with me and gave up a whole day of her life to sit there and do whatever I needed her to do. I had to cut her hair. I had to um, put a roller set on it. I had to do pin curls on one side, finger waves on the other, the ugliest board set you ever saw because they have these crazy requirements. So they know that you can do everything. And grandma even looked in the mirror and she was like, I like it. It looks great. And it might've helped me with my grade. I don't know. Um, I had to put makeup on her that day. Uh, do a shampoo on her, do her nails. And it was just a fun day. She came down and spent the night with me and went and did that with me and was just so happy when I finally was licensed because then she knew she could just call me in whenever she did. And of course, you know, you always have those regrets. Gosh, I wish I could just do her hair one more time and, you know, chat with her. And whenever I did her hair, oh, Samantha, like, let me know. I'll put a roast on. I'll make this. I'll make that. And I was always like, no, let me feed you. So I'd do her hair and take her out to eat or do something like that. And that was just amazing memories. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Stephanie's dog, Bandit. I don't know if a lot of you know this story, but grandma had lymphoma and uh, we were scared. We didn't know what to do. It was the first cancer she had. And you just think lymphoma, how are you going to come out of this? And she did. She got through it. And the day we got the call and said grandma was in remission, uh, Bandit was really sick and nobody knew what was wrong with him. And they had taken him to the vet and they got the call about three, four hours later that Bandit had full lymphoma and wasn't going to make it. So don't ask me how that happened or what, but that dog took that lymphoma from grandma. In my heart, I believe this, and I think Stephanie believes it. We've talked about it, but that dog saved grandma. So I said when this happened, I was going to give a shout out to that dog. Thank you, Bandit, because we got like, what was it, 10 or 11 more years with grandma? So a lot of amazing memories. So that was great. Um, also growing up, uh, grandma was always the person I called when I didn't know how to spell a word. 
And the day that grandma called me to spell a word, I was like, holy, I hit the big time. My grandma's calling me to spell a word like, oh, man, I better get this word right. So that was just another amazing memory. Um, one thing grandma told me to do and we haven't done since COVID and we need to do as a family, as grandma said to me, Samantha, I love that you throw this Christmas party and I want you to do that every year, no matter what. She was like, don't ever stop doing that. I need you to do that. So that's my job. And she also told me it wouldn't hurt to throw a family reunion or two in. So I guess that's my job. And it's always a bummer to think, you know, it would have been great to have grandma here, but um, she'll be with us. I don't doubt that. Um, and also, I just want to touch on the fact of how generous she was, just so generous. Whenever she saw me, she was always like, oh, uh, here, uh, you know, you came over and did this for me, or you brought me that. Uh, look in a magazine. Let me buy you something. And I was like, I don't want you to buy me anything. I just wanted to come see you, or I wanted to give this to you. Like, thank you. Um, and also I lived with grandma. Grandma would have welcomed any of us in her home. And there was a time when we just quite, quite weren't sure what we were doing. And we stayed there for two months. And that was when we did decide to move to Kearney and, and it just kind of helped us refocus. But those two months, we had the most amazing breakfast that we woke up to every day. And like Jared even says, like, yeah, she, I just miss waking up to those mornings at your grandma's house. It wasn't very many, but they're so memorable. And she would either be frying corn or bacon or eggs in the bacon grease. And that's still how I fry my eggs. Um, so, yeah, thank you, grandma. And we all knew that when she did this or this, you were in trouble. I love you, grandma. Um, hi, my name is Brianna. Um, I'm one of grandma's uh, great grandchildren. Um, I just want to say that um, she was very generous. I remember after I graduated high school, I, you know, I'd always come and visit, but there would be at least be once a month where I'd have to ask, you know, hey, grandma, do you have like 10 or 20 bucks for gas? And she'd always give it to me. She'd give, she, she'd give you her last dollar if she could. Um, but I do remember, like, when I was really little, she would, like, hand sew me dresses. And um, I absolutely loved wearing them. I also remember sitting with her at the table, helping her cut out her paper dolls. Um, and she made the best chicken and dumpling soup. Um, I probably will never make soup like her. Um, but yeah, that's just what I wanted to share. And yeah, heaven gained another angel and um, she's not suffering anymore. And um, she will always be with us. The family has selected another song. And as we listen to it, please reflect on what has been shared about Norma Jean Foster. Not if my love can find your heart There's no need to take a stand For it was I who chose to start I see no need to take me home I'm old enough to face the dawn. Just call me angel of the morning, angel. Just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby. Just call me angel of the morning, angel. Then slowly turn away. Come 
sun's light will be dim, then it won't matter anyhow. If morning's echo says we've sinned, well, it was what I wanted now. And if we're victims of the night, I won't be blinded by the light. Just call me angel of the morning, angel. Just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby. now have two more family members and then we will um, have a message so two more family members will come forward and share remembrances Okay, <laughs> I'm Callista Foster. I'm Callista Foster. I am one of grandma's great grandchildren. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was really close with grandma. I was, I was probably with Grandma Lake every day. I was the one who spent a lot of my time after work going to get her Little King's soup because towards the end, that's the only thing she'd eat. And um, I was there for the end, but I still remember all the mornings when I woke up um, that she'd help me get ready for school and watch my cartoons. And then when I got home, she'd make my two ham sandwiches and my ramen noodles and set me up in the living room with my cartoons until Jeopardy came on. <laughs> and then I was kicked off the TV for two hours. <laughs> um, she, I spent a lot of time on the armrest of her chair just watching shows with her. The reason the reason Adrian's named Adrian is because I used to spend a lot of time watching Adrian Monk with Grandma, and when my parents asked me what we should name him, I said Adrian Monk. <laughs> Monk didn't, <laughs> didn't didn't pass a check though. <laughs> Grandma was always there when stuff got hard. <laughs> she 
took me and my mom in when we needed it. And she always, whenever I felt down, made me feel so loved and protected. Like nothing was going to happen. And honestly, all the times I spent up in the hospital, sleeping on those uncomfortable couches, she always would say, you can go home, I'll be okay. And I was like, Grandma, this is the one thing I can do for you. I can sit with you and I can listen to you talk. And sometimes we'd sit there in complete silence and she would say, I'm so sorry I'm not talking. And I'm, I would say, Grandma, it's okay, I'm just here with you. I didn't want to ever be alone because I never felt alone when I was with her. Okay, I love you, Grandma. Is there anyone else that would like to share? Okay, going, going, gone. I signed the Lord's Prayer in Native American Sign Languages many times in all the years that my late husband, the Reverend Ron Goombay, and I, as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ in Christian ministry. Did you want to share, young man? Okay. I was going to the bathroom. Not only do I share my Native American heritage as a Native American woman, but I also share who I am as a child of God, Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth, or in the language of the great Ponca nation, Wakanda. At one of these times, signing the Lord's Prayer, a woman approached me looking direct directly at me with a smile and said, I would like you to come and sign the Lord's Prayer at my funeral. I am here today to fulfill that request from that woman, and she is Norma Jean Foster. I live just north of Norma's home, and I've often seen many residents of the Ponca housing complex standing at the door or on the porch while picking up one of her neighbors for church on Sunday mornings. Maybe one of those times I saw Norma at her door looking out to a new day. In her passing from this earth, she has stepped into a new and everlasting day into heaven. When I looked at a photo of Norma, I remembered her face and her beautiful, gracious smile. I remembered her. I always remember the smile, and on this earth, she had a beautiful smile. In addition to signing the Lord's Prayer after this message, I ask for the honor of helping lay her body back into the earth from which we all came and from which we are all made from by Wakanda. Because like Norma, I am a native woman and I know she was proud of being a member of the Ponca tribe of Nebraska. I am a mother and a grandmother and looking forward to even seeing a great grandchild like Norma did in her life, which is a great achievement. Yesterday, I talked with her family as we had a short meeting. I looked at all the faces in the room, and not only were they respectful to her memory, but their eyes were full of love and ad admiration for her. In the bright eyes of her daughters, her grandchildren, and yes, even her son-in-laws, I saw the heritage of love and respect that I know that Norma has passed on to her family. There was laughter and tears from us all present in the room. Not only did Norma like to give gifts, she cooked and fried foods. No one skinny person could ever walk into her home and get away with being skinny. She was sure to head to the kitchen and fry up some pancakes with apples cooked in or fried donuts. She even made cakes without a recipe. Her daughters remember her burning everything she cooked, but her grandchildren remember her good unburnt cooking. I guess things change and improve over a generation. 
Someone even remembered the fried liver that she made for the dogs. But somehow she found herself sitting at the table eating the fried liver. Yummy. What a memory. Her family knew how much she enjoyed her candy and her sweets. She enjoyed her candy so much that Brenda remembered one night in a motel. She kept her awake from her mom opening candy to eat through the night. Why do they make candy so loud when you unwrap it? <laughs> what about when she would say, oh, my God, oh, my God, and scare the heck out of someone who was nearby, only to find out that she was reacting to news of one of her pets. She loved her animals. She loved them so much that she fried liver for them. Now, that's the love of someone with a big heart. We mothers are like that. We have enough heart to love everyone and our pets. Her daughters remembered when they wanted to play their records. For those of you don't, who, who don't know what a record is, it's a large, round, plastic disc that played music on a record player. Essentially a box with a little arm and a needle. But before the girls could ever hear their records, Norma would play her records first. Jean Pitney, Patsy Cline, Brenda Lee, Perry Como, Nancy Sinatra, Sam Cooke were the order of the day for Norma. Her daughters probably lost interest or time and probably walked away with Norma's songs still playing on the record player. So when you go back in time and listen to one of those songs, think of Norma and smile, cherish her memory. She also loved the movies and taking her family with her downtown in its glory days when movie theaters were a destination, except for the one movie where she took herself and her children out of the, out of the theater once she realized that they were watching a movie about lesbian vampires. Not, con not content she wanted for her or her children. That showed how good of a mom she was to her children. She took them out right away. She loved musicals as well as movies from the golden age of cinema. Even though she scared the hell, his words, out of her son-in-law when he had to first meet her, she introduced him to musicals. A good musical is good for the heart. She loved watching Carol Burnett and game shows like Jeopardy on TV. She had some favorite actors and actresses as well as her non-favorites, some actresses whom she deemed homewreckers. Norma's door was always open, even to the ones who did her wrong. Everyone stayed with Norma. Everyone walked away from her table Stomach satisfied with her food. You couldn't be skinny around Norma Jean Foster. Norma had many, many skills. One of Norma's skills is her paper dolls. How cool are paper dolls? I can relate because I love playing with paper dolls. Those were our toys when we were little. Her fa family said that she could make excellent paper dolls and she had a great classic collection a paper dolls, a woman after my heart, a woman after your heart. Another good memory of her skills was hand-sewn binky blankets for babies in her family. Paper dolls, binky blankets, now that's love. That's a good woman who, choose, who chose life and whose life we honor and remember today. And today we take a last look at the body, the tent, the outer being of Norma Jean Foster. When we see her body, but because of the love of Wakanda, Almighty God, and the sacrifice of the Savior of the world on the cross at Calvary, Jesus Christ, Wakanda Jinga Jinga, she is alive right now in heaven. She is alive right now in heaven's glory forever. You know, Jesus made that possible for her, and he makes it possible for you. Before she passed away, 
Norma Jean prayed to ask Jesus into her heart. By praying a simple prayer to accept Jesus has guaranteed that Norma is now realizing eternity on the golden streets of heaven in all its perfection. Because she trusted in Jesus and prayed to receive him, she is no longer sick, no longer struggling, no longer laboring, no longer suffering from three difficult battles with cancer, no longer struggling as a single parent of six children. She is free and she is healed. A woman who was generous, especially when she gave gifts, gifts to her family, like the cherished fairy lamp, the dolls, the toys, and all the thoughtful gifts to all of her beloved family. Gifts were important to her, and many of you received her gifts, just as she received the gift of eternal life from her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of his death and resurrection on the cross of Calvary, Norma has received the greatest gift of all, eternity. Cherish the gifts that your mom, your grandma, your auntie, your friend Norma gave to you because that gift was given to you from the depths of her heart and from the work of her hand. Norma Jean Foster took from God the greatest gift that she could take, and now God is extending the greatest gift to you today. Eternal life is a gift from God. Jesus told us that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father, to heaven, except through me, John 14, 6. I can share how to receive that gift should you want to know. All you have to do is ask. I'm here to tell you today that Wakanda has a son, an only son, and his name is Wakanda Jinga Jinga, the son of God, Jesus. The Bible, the holy word of God tells us in John 3, 16, for Wakanda so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Wakanda Jinga Jinga, so that whoever believes in Wakanda Jinga Jinga will not perish and have everlasting life. Norma believed. How about you? I think that if she could come back to this earth with a message for those of you out there, she would beg you to trust in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior so that one day you can join her in eternity in the presence of the loving eternal God and his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Wakanda Jinga Jinga, forever. In my language, we say, ka, ki, ka, ki, ka, ki, ka, which means forever. Norma Jean is now alive in heaven forever because of Jesus Christ. I think you want to go and join her there too, forever. I know I will see her again, and all those whom we love who have gone on to heaven only through the love and action of Jesus Christ. Norma's Wakanda Jinga Jinga. Now I am going to fulfill her request. Long ago on this land, our Native American people spoke their own languages. So they had to develop a common universal language, which is the Native American Sign Language, the forerunner of the Deaf Sign Language. Our Native people prayed. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, prayed to his Father. And in this prayer, Jesus taught us to pray to our Father. I am honored today to sign the Native American Sign Language to the Lord's Prayer. After this closing prayer, we will begin the process of viewing the body. The mortician will come up here and, and lead you into what you are to do as we view her body, that tent. That's not her laying there. She's in heaven now. She's alive, kicking, dancing, and rejoicing because of Jesus. So we don't have to, we don't have to worry about where, where she is. We know where she is. And so today, to fulfill her request, I am signing the Lord's Prayer in Native American Sign Language. I'm going to step down there. Let this be a moment of respect and quiet when the prayer ends in reverence to her request, the Lord's Prayer, Native American Sign Language.
forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the battle. 